With NFL games constantly being filled with contact, there's players that nearly died because of the devastating injuries on the field. With Napoleon being a popular player for the Raiders back in the early 90s, his career-ending injury came as a shock to everyone. In the early 1990s, when football in America was at its peak, millions across the country tuned in every Monday night to watch the best matchups happening that week, and some fans saw arguably one of the worst injuries in NFL history. As fans sat down to watch the Raiders take on the 49ers on one Monday night, they saw Raiders running back Napoleon McCallum take the snap and run behind his lead blockers when he was tackled and he came down the wrong way, which left his left leg bent in a way that it wasn't supposed to go. Fans at the stadium couldn't imagine the severity, but fans at home who saw it up close on replay were stunned and grossed out. The injury was so bad that he suffered a ruptured artery in his left knee, tore three ligaments, tore the calf and the hamstring off the bone, and suffered nerve damage in the knee. He initially thought that he'd only face a long rehab, but, but McCallum's surgeon told him that there was no chance of him ever being medically cleared to play again. The surgeon said that he normally didn't see leg injuries this severe other than in car accidents, and he even told him that he might have to have it amputated. The injury was bad enough to end his career, well short of what he expected, and after six surgeries, he never played a snap again. Again. With Johnny Knox playing a pivotal role in the Chicago Bears team in 2011, it was shocking to see him go down with an injury that stopped him from ever being able to play another snap. 2011, in a late season game against the Seahawks, the Bears were backed up to their own red zone, but the score is still 0-0. The ball was passed to Knox on a pass route, and after he caught the ball, he did some shaking on the defense before he lost control of the ball and fumbled. Knox went to chase after the ball, and as he was diving to the ground, he collided with Seahawks defensive end Anthony Hargrove, who also dove for the ball, and the pileup was so big, you couldn't tell an injury was at the bottom of all this. Fans watching the game live, as well as many on TV, were confused used because even with the hard analyzation, it was very hard to tell what happened to him, but afterwards, he was stretched off the field in a stiff position. Replay barely shows it, but Knox was hit so hard that his back practically touched his butt, which fractured multiple vertebrae, and he suffered nerve damage and had to undergo spinal fusion surgery. Despite quite a bit of rehab, the promising young receiver's career was over, and he retired a year later without ever playing another snap. In 2015, after not playing football for nearly four years, the Bears caught up with Knox to discuss his injury and asked how he was doing. Knox replied by saying, I feel good. I'm standing. That's the main thing. It could be worse than it is now. But for me to be able to walk after an injury like that, that's big. I'm pressing forward. I can't worry about the past. I've just got to keep looking forward for me, my family, and my kid. That's what it's about. Knox said that after the hit, he could tell that Anthony Hargrove was shaken up with concern, as well as Marshawn Lynch wishing that he was okay. Knox even said, I was in the hospital, but I didn't have my phone on me. Lynch left a message to see how I was doing to try and see if I was okay. That also meant a lot to me. With Daryl Stingley within days of reaching the biggest NFL contract at the time, a hit on him during a game would not only change his life forever, but also change the rules on the field forever. In a 1978 preseason game, the Patriots were scoring off against the Raiders, who had the league's hardest hitter at the time named Jack Tatum. As Daryl Stingley went up the field to catch a ball, Jack Tatum laid the boom on Daryl before he even had the ball, which in football is a very illegal move. And after that hit, Daryl looked lifeless laying on the field. After many minutes of trainers and medical staff attending to Stingley, his teammates were on one knee until he was placed on a stiff stretcher and taken off the field. He suffered compression of his spinal cord and broke two of his vertebrae, which was the cause of him never playing another snap in the NFL. Ten years after the injury, Daryl was interviewed where he talked about the injury, saying, I've relived that moment over and over again. I was 26 years old at the time, and I remember thinking, what's going to happen to me? If I live, what am I going to be like? And then there were all those whys, whys, whys. It was only after I stopped asking why that I was able to regroup and go on with my life. Steve Grogan, who was the one who made the pass to Daryl before the injury, spoke and said, I thought about that throw over and over the years. Could I have changed anything or done anything differently? That hit was probably not necessary in a game with no meaning. Another teammate of theirs even said, I saw replays many, many times, and many times Jack Tatum was criticized, but there wasn't anything at the time illegal about that play. I do think probably that play was a forerunner for some of the changes in the rules that exist today that are more protective of receivers, especially if there's a head-to-head -head type contact. I think that probably preempted some of the things that happened today. But unfortunately, in 2005, they all passed away due to illness at age 55. Jack Tatum apparently never said sorry or never spoke to Daryl after the hit, but after he passed away in 2005, Jack spoke publicly and said, I'm deeply saddened by the death of Daryl Stingley. Daryl will forever be remembered for his strength and courage. My thoughts and prayers go out to his family. With Rashad Johnson going down arguably having one of the most gruesome injuries in NFL history, thankfully he at least made it out the way he did. In 2013, during a game between the Cardinals and Saints, Cardinal safety Rashad Johnson was making a tackle on a punt where after the play he took his glove off and almost threw up when he saw his hand. In the heat of the moment, he felt like maybe he got hit and the pain would just go away in a few seconds, but when he took his glove off, he realized the whole tip of his middle finger was completely missing. Many couldn't believe this when it happened. After the game, he spoke about the injury and Rashad said, I'm not even sure how it happened. If I had to take a guess, I'd say maybe it dug into the turf and there it snapped back and broke it away. My glove wasn't torn or ripped, which makes me think it didn't get caught in a face mask or a cleat stepped on it. After the game, Rashad had surgery to shave down the bone that was sticking out of his finger. And lucky for him, he only missed minimal time in the NFL despite such a gross injury. Rashad broke down the injury weeks after the surgery and he said, I think it's just such a unique thing that happened. Guys tear their ACL 
well or rip their bicep or do a lot of things, but most of the things can be repaired and put back into place. But losing the top portion of my finger? You know there's no replacing it. There's no growing it back. I see the protection and I set it. I saw the returner was going to set up the return on the left side. I engaged him to keep him from going that way. He tries to hit up inside and I come off the block to make a tackle and once I get up, I feel the pain in my hand. When he was asked about how something so gruesome at first went unnoticed, he said, just the adrenaline that you have when you play the game. You're so fired up and you're so into it. You're so zoned out. There's even times where you're playing a game that you don't even notice the fans. With Joe Theismann being a legendary quarterback for the Redskins, it seemed as if all the United States was watching the game where Joe was injured and it still ranks today as arguably the nastiest injury in the NFL. On Monday Night Football in 1985, Joe Theismann and the Redskins were facing off against Giants legend Lawrence Taylor and his crew when Joe Theismann's career would change forever. The exact play was the opening scene in the famous football movie The Blind Side. It still to this day goes down as one of the worst leg injuries in football history. During the snap, Joe got the ball and handed it to his running back who ran a few yards and then threw the ball back for a flea flicker. But when nobody opened, Joe started to scramble. And as he scrambled, Lawrence Taylor got a hold of him and landed on his leg with all of his weight. You can clearly see his leg snap and break live on television. Many players and coaches who were at that very game had a lot to say about it, including Giants head coach Bill Parcells, who spoke about the injury saying, our players were reacting in a very adamant way, motioning strongly to the Washington training staff to get out there. It was almost as if one of their teammates had gotten hurt. My first impression was this doesn't look good. And Jeff Bostic, who was one of Theismann's linemen, said, Joe was just laying on his back motionless. From maybe about four or five inches above his ankle, his foot and leg are at about 15 to 20 degree angle away from each other. And he's just got this bone popping through his sock. The referee said something to Joe and Joe nodded his head yes. So the referee picked up Joe's leg to move it and blood shot up and hit the referee in the chest. I remember watching the referee jump back as the blood shot from Joe's leg. I said, that's all I need to see. And last but not least was Lawrence Taylor who spoke and said, I knew right away. I heard the leg pop and he was in a load of pain. I remember just trying to get off of him because I knew it was bad real bad. I started waving to the Redskins bench chief the training staff out on the field. With Anquan Bolden helping Larry Fitzgerald lead the Cardinals for a year, his career was cut short due to a hit that he took in a game against the Jets that changed the situation forever. In a 2008 game between the Cardinals and the Jets, Kurt Warner was trying to lead his Cardinals to a win when he threw a pretty deep go route to Anquan Bolton. And as he caught the ball on the goal line, two Jets safeties hit him in the helmet with their own helmets from both sides at the same time. You can see him drop the ball the second he's hit and he just goes limp on the field, not moving a muscle, which quickly brought out the medical staff. After laying on the field for what seemed like hours, he was stretched off the field and we later found out how bad it was. Anquan broke many bones in his face, including his orbital bones and his jaw, and he had to get metal plates and screws in his face. And it's also worth mentioning that he was knocked out cold initially after the hit. After surgeries and other procedures, Anquan spoke about how he was feeling and he said, I'm feeling good enough to put a helmet back on now. I feel like I'm ready to go. That's what I've been working towards these past couple of weeks, getting back out on the field after the bye week. A guy hit me from behind so I couldn't absorb the blow like I usually do in the front. My helmet kind of lifted up and the guy hit me square on. Bonus teammate and good friend Larry Fitzgerald even spoke about it saying, I'm excited static. He was a big part of what we're able to do on the offense. With him back, this offense is so much more versatile. He can line up in the backfield, he can play quarterback, he could be in the slot, he could be outside. It just gives the defense more things to prepare for, and it gives me the opportunity to make some deep plays. With Zach Miller getting injured on a play that scored a touchdown for his team, nobody knew that he was hurt except for him until after all the celebrating. In 2017, during a game between the Bears and the Saints, Mitchell Trubisky and his offense were trying to make a comeback with him down 14 to three, when he threw a deep ball to tight end Zach Miller, who caught the touchdown, but also snapped his leg in the process. Trubisky threw a 35 yard touchdown to Miller who went up and came down with the ball, but landed awkwardly on his leg. And after scoring, you can see him grabbing it in clear pain. Miller was helped off the field and he was rushed to a New Orleans hospital to have surgery on his leg, which was very similar to the surgery that Napoleon McCallum had, where he injured nerves as well. After all the madness, Zach Miller talked about what happened that day, and he started by saying that as soon as he broke from the safety, he knew he was scoring, and his initial reaction was to hold onto the ball as long as he could to secure that touchdown, even though he heard a nasty pop. Miller also explained that he remembered putting the ball down, thinking that without a doubt he had to have scored, and as the medical staff came out, he said that he remained calm, but also remembers telling the medical trainer that his knee was gone. Miller said that he had two options on where he could go to get this emergency surgery done, and someone on the Bears medical staff made a quick decision, which turned out to be the correct one, and potentially saved Miller from losing his leg. If the surgery went south, his leg would have had to be amputated, and Miller said the only thing that he remembers is saying, I just remember telling the doc, save my leg, please. And with injuries happening each week in the NFL, there's no doubt that it won't end anytime soon, but the league has in fact paid very close attention to things that can be avoided, and is always looking to change rules for player safety in the future. Hey, uh, could you do me a favor and click on this video on the screen right here? You see this video right here? This video is like actually a fire video. This is it's pretty good. It's actually amazing, okay? It's amazing. It. Trust me. You just need to click on it, dog. That's it. Just, just, just click on the video. Stop thinking. Don't even think about it. Just click on it.